Hello friends and welcome back to Generation Pixel Land. If you're new to the channel, well you picked a great day to pop along because I thought I might honour the A to ZX of the spectrum and what better way to do that than with a top 100 of the games that I've played this year. Now not every game that I've played this year but just the ZX Spectrum games so if you want to see my top 100 ZX Spectrum games played this year and you just wait until after these. Just making the list out number 100 we have The Alchemist, so get your powers of transmutation on and play some of this magical game. At number 99 we have Danger Mouse, so fill the shoes of that number one mouse secret agent, take on the evil Baron Greenbacks and stop that evil android Danger Mouse from taking over the world. Coming in at number 98 we have Zooms, so take to the skies and protect those refugees from the evil bombers trying to blast them out of existence, and try not to be so tempted to do it yourself. And at number 97 we have Vigilante, the game where the bad guys don't want to beat you up so much as just hug you to death. Vigilante for the masochist. Coming in at number 96 we have Ultimate Combat Mission, the game where if you like trudging through treacle and really slow combat, well this game will be right up your street. Number 95 is the first Star Wars entry game, Return of the Jedi. Now if you want to destroy all your fond memories of the Star Wars franchise, well you must play this game. Well some of the animations are nice. At number 94 we have Eddie Kids Jump Challenge. Now if you like that just one more game addictiveness, but you also like some really terrible in-game physics, well this is a game for you. All the way up at 93 we have It's a Knockout, which is quite possibly one of the first minigame compilations I've ever played. Possibly one of the first minigame compilations ever. Coming in as high as number 92 we have Quackers. Now Quackers is a simple shooting gallery. But at the very end, can you stop that turtle? Well, you have to try it to see. Coming in at number 91, we have Quarterback. Now, if you think sports games in the modern era are bad, well, you just have to travel back to the 80s to see what we had to suffer with then. At number 90, we have The Fall Guy, where you take on the role of 80s TV stuntman called Seavers. But let's be fair, do we truly make Clint Eastwood look so fine in this game? Well, you have to try it to see for yourself. And at number 89 we have Hunchback, a very early game from Ocean Software and let me tell you, this is certainly one of those old school games that you play if you truly want to torture yourself. And at number 88 we have Ping Pong and Konami don't normally do sports games but when they do, as you can see, they certainly put the ping back in Pong. This is one well worth the play and it's two player also. At number 87 we have Pit Fighter, a truly terrible port from the arcades but it's worth anyone's list just considering how much work must have been done to try and get this game on a ZX Spectrum. At number 86 we have on cue snooker so put on your bow tie and get on that waistcoat because it's time to play a gentleman's sport and the physics in this game, despite being quite early, were spot on. Coming in at number 85 we have Juggernaut, now if you think truck driving simulators are popular in the modern day, well even back then in the 80s we tried to get those deliveries in on time, they just didn't look as pretty. At number 84 we have Old Mummy where you search that pyramid to find the treasure and let me tell you this is better than most modern mobile games and I'm willing to fight you if you disagree. At number 83 we have Nomad where you have to save the world from the asteroid Talos using your nemesis organisation mobile attack droid. But bear in mind the physics are bouncier than a pogo stick on a trampoline. At number 82 we have The Never Ending Story, another example of where the ZX Spectrum took a wonderful wonderful 80s movie and turned it into a text adventure that would frustrate children for decades. 
Coming in at number 81, we have Escape. Now take their Pac-Man formula, but make your power-ups and your pickups invisible. And not only that, take away those pesky ghosts and put in dinosaurs instead. What's not to love about that? At number 80 we have Quartet, it's a platform shooter from Sega and it's not for one or two or three but four players. That's correct people, the four player Sega shooter platformer. At number 79 we have The Untouchables, yes it's another movie tie in and this one, well, it doesn't quite hit the mark as you take on the role of Elliot Ness and try and take down Al Capone. So much potential, so little realised. At number 78 we have the Mario Brothers, that's right, you heard me correctly, the Mario Brothers the Nintendo Classic is on the ZX Spectrum, an 8-bit home microcomputer. And once you pick your jaw up off the floor, why don't you go and try it for yourself? Coming in at number 77 we have NARC, and that's correct, even over here in the good old G of K, we also had the war on drugs, so just say no to drugs people, and just go play some video games instead. At number 76 we have Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge. Now this is a prime example of an 8-bit microcomputer using as little of the screen as possible for gameplay so the game can run smoothly enough for the player to actually play the game. At number 75 we have The Lemons, the most addictive game known to mankind and yes of course the ZX Spectrum had its very own port so us ZX Spectrum players could get just as addicted as the rest of you guys. At number 74 we have Load Runner, yes another game that was ported to multiple platforms and despite being nothing more than a light puzzle platformer it is beloved by many. So don't be surprised when Video Game Monthly send you many copies of this. At number 73 we have Hong Kong Fui because who doesn't love Hanna-Barbera cartoons as much as they love video games. Now this game of course looks way better than it plays, but you know what, it's worth a spot in anyone's collection. Get it played today. At number 72 we have Hard Driving. Now this game is infamous on many systems because it was an arcade game that struggled on an arcade cabinet. For me however, just the mere attempt of putting Hard Driving on a ZX Spectrum makes it worthy on any list. Coming in at number 71 we have California Games and this is basically the Olympic Games as seen through the eyes of a Californian. Take on surfing, roller skating, hacky sack and all those wonderful summer games that we can't play over here in the UK. At number 70 we have Nightmare, now be aware if you like mind bending obscure puzzlers this is the game for you. You will however probably need some sort of nostalgia for 80s children's television in the UK to truly understand and appreciate this game. And at number 69 we have Boulder Dash, another classic arcade game that was ported to just about every system under the sun. And let's face it, does anyone really need to talk about Boulder Dash in 2021? Well no, because you should have played it already. Coming in at number 68 we have Gobble Man, and I know what you're thinking, this is nothing more than a complete and utter rip off of Pac-Man. But let's face it, back in the early 80s when you were faced with Pac-Man in the Atari 2600 or Gobble Man, you chose Gobble Man. Coming in at number 67 we have Xevious, now Xevious is probably the granddaddy of all modern day shooters. Released almost before the beginning of time, I challenge anyone to find a modern day shmup that doesn't owe something at least in part to Xevious. At number 66 we have Horus and the Spiders, now Horus was one of the ZX Spectrum's earliest mascots and despite this being the weakest game in the official Horus trilogy it still deserves a place on anyone's top 100. So check out Horus today. At number 65 we have Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, yes another movie tie in game that looks fantastic but unfortunately doesn't quite play up to its standards of its visuals, but as a fan of the franchise it's a must have on anyone's top 100. 
At number 64, we have Konami's Golf. That's right, the wonderful Konami coming back with another sports title, and this time they're taking on the Scottish game, and not too badly either. Not quite up to PGA standards of today, but you know what? You can certainly see where the game was heading. At number 63 we have Predator, yes it's another movie tie-in game and it's another game where the visuals are far superior to the gameplay. But you know what? It's Arnie, it's Predator, it's a must play and it's a must have in anyone's top 100. Coming in at number 62 we have Q10 Tank Buster, it's another shooter but this time a horizontal shooter and let me tell you this one plays as good as it looks, some interesting mechanics and well worth anyone's top 100 ZX Spectrum games. Coming in at number 61 we have Salamander or if you're from over the pond you probably called this one Life Force, it's another horizontal shooter and a big hitter on the arcades back in the day. On the ZX Spectrum, it does OK. At number 60 we have Lunar Jetman from Ultimate Play the Game and of course you probably know them better as Rare. Now this game despite being from Ultimate Play the Game is quite low down in the list because purely of the gameplay it looks fantastic but it's just a little too difficult. Coming in at number 59 we have Double Dragon and I know there will be a lot of shock and all at this being so low in the list but let's face it, this list is a personal list and beat em up and brothers, they weren't my cup of tea back in the day and still aren't today. But it still makes the list. At number 58 we have YR Kung Fu and it's a very early game indeed and it's the forefather of all the modern beat em ups that you play today. No YR Kung Fu then there's certainly no Street Fighter 2 and certainly no Mortal Kombat or Pit Fighter. Did I just say Pit Fighter? At number 57 we have Elevator Action, it's another game that was ported to so many different systems I couldn't even count them and all my fingers and toes put together. It is however another example of how simple gameplay can make fun and addictive gameplay. Coming in at number 56 we have Fred, so explore those Egyptian pyramids and find all that treasure and guess what, you get to shoot the bad guys. Another example much like elevator action where simple fun gameplay makes addictive fun gameplay. Number 55 brings us the Carry Warriors, yes it was another big hitter in the arcades back in the day but once ported to the ZX Spectrum that dreaded colour clash made the game damn near unplayable but still it's a must have on your top 100 list. At number 54 we have Kung Fu Master, the game that well probably just inspired Vigilante but brought us the hugging bad guy way before it. It makes its way much higher up in the list however because in my humble opinion it was much better than its follow up Vigilante. At number 53 we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a game that was definitely NES hard on the NES and probably even harder on the ZX Spectrum. The only thing going for the ZX Spectrum, well, the wonderful colours and graphics. At number 52 we have Tapper, the wonderful arcade port from Sega where you have to make sure all your punters are happy by throwing as many drinks as you can towards them and collecting their empty glasses on the way. And don't forget that dastardly bonus round. Coming in at number 51 and just missing out the top 50 we have Marble Madness, a game brought to us by that genius Mark Cerny who brought us other fabulous items such as the PlayStation 4. This game however is as tricky as it looks. Coming in at number 50 we have Prison Riot, a game that was highly topical at the time because there were rooftop riots in the UK at certain prisons. This game however is much more fun than watching live action prison riots and of course you get to solve that tricky bomb puzzle at the end. At number 49 we have Jackal, yes it's another big hitter from the arcade era and it suffered the same sort of problems as the previous entries I Carry Warriors, however you did get to ride around in jeeps in this one making it just a tad bit more fun. At number 48 we have Universal Hero which was part of the graphic adventure genre boom that we had in the late 80s on the ZX Spectrum, littered with pop culture references and 
funny as all hell. Definitely play this one if you get the chance. Coming in at number 47 we have Target Renegade and it's another side scrolling brawler. This one however looks fantastic and it plays just as well. The only reason it's so low down in my list as well, as I've said, these weren't my cup of tea. At number 46 we have ATV Simulator, yes it's one of those games that tagged Simulator on to the end despite being, well it was just an arcade racing game. This one was a little bit fun due to the physics and mechanics that made it just a little bit bouncy. Coming in at number 45 we have another tie in, this time Batman. And yes, it's the first isometric puzzle maze game that you've seen on this list. Now, not everyone liked isometrics, but you know what? When you tag on Batman, it was well worth the play. At number 44, we have Cookie, which was a multi-directional shooter, where you as the chef have to get the good ingredients into the bowl and keep the bad ingredients out of the bowl, because everyone loves broccoli, but nobody likes fish bones. At number 43 we have Cobra, another movie tie in. Now I'll be frankly honest with you, I don't know whether I love this game because of the game or simply because I loved the movie. But anyway, what you have to do is take on the role of Marion Cobretti and kill the bad guys. Coming in at number 42 we have Airwolf, a TV tie in this time and a really tough puzzle shooter game. Now you didn't get many puzzle shooter games is probably why I quite enjoyed this one. Now a lot of people hated this game because you couldn't hover as a helicopter. But on the ZX Spectrum version at least it was well worth the play. At number 41 we have Booty, where you take control of a young ship hand who has to collect all the booty. Now I do like saying booty because it just basically means treasure, but over the pond they're all having a giggle. So this light puzzle platformer will worth the play. Coming in at number 40 we have The Empire Strikes Back and now this is where I believe Star Wars games, or at least retro Star Wars games, should live. Cockpit views from inside snow speeders and X-Wings, taking out all-terrain transports and of course, TIE Fighters. Coming in at number 39 we have Euridium, it's another schmuck from back in the day, but this one had the unique or at least unique at the time mechanic where you could flip your ship onto its side and even reverse backwards. Gameplay mechanics it expanded on the wonderful Defender. And at number 38 we have Beachhead, the combat simulator where you had a game that had multiple different gameplay modes as you commanded your army to storm the beaches and take over the enemy fortress and win the war for the good guys. Now that's what video games are about. Coming in at number 37 we have Bomb Jack which is another early arcade game. But the thing about the ZX Spectrum version, well it was probably even better than anything else out there at the time. Both in graphics and gameplay, it totally outshone most of its competition at the time, in my humble opinion. At number 36 we have Chucky Egg. Now on the surface it's just a simple platformer, but considering the time this game was released, then you have to take into consideration just how good it was. It did have quite a lot of competition at the time, which is why it's so low down in this list, but still very worth the play. And at number 35 we have Chase HQ, and yes it's another arcade classic. Now despite what you can see from these wonderful ZX Spectrum graphics, it is quite low down in the list and that is simply the same case as the brothers and beat em ups. Arcade racers aren't my thing, but you can't deny just how good this game was. At number 34 we have Hyper Sports and we're on to sports games that I actually did enjoy back in the day and still enjoy today, and that's the Olympic sport type events. Now they did destroy your keyboard or joystick, depending on what you were button bashing or joystick waggling, but they were such fun and great multiplayer games too. And at number 33 we have Enduro Racer and it's another arcade racer. Now I have said I didn't enjoy arcade racers, but this had to go on the list and it had to be fairly high, simply because of the quality of this game. It was much more like the arcade port than, well, the other ports that went to other systems, so well done ZX Spectrum. And at number 32 we have Frank Bruno's Box and now Punch-Out was an arcade game before this. Obviously this is a clone of that game, but this game came out way before Nintendo got their Punch-Out. 
So if you wanted to play Punch Out at home, you had no option but to buy yourself a ZX Spectrum and play Frank Bruno's boxing. And yes, it's just as hard. And at number 31 we have Gauntlet, yes, that world famous co-op game where you and your buddies can battle the hordes of evil together, but it never quite turns out that way, does it? No. One of the wonderful things about Gauntlet is it turns into more of a, a four-player battle royale where your buddies are trying to beat you as well. And at number 30 we have Sir Lancelot. Now Sir Lancelot is what, well it looks like a simple puzzle platformer, but we all know back in the 80s there was no such thing as a simple puzzle platformer. For me the reason it's so high, it just drips with nostalgia because it's a game I played over and over again. In Retro Edge UK he agrees too. And at number 29 we have Mickey where you play the titular Mickey, a young boy in high school running about causing trouble. Try not to get caught by either the teacher, the janitor or even the school cook because let's face it back in the 80s that's all we really wanted to do when we were at school was cause a bit of mayhem and havoc and just some general shenanigans. And at number 28 we have Night Time and as I've said you can't talk about ZX Spectrum without graphic adventures and the Magic Night trilogy or I believe there was four eventually, they were the pinnacle of these games. Now they did cause your brain to melt because the obtuse puzzles just drove you demented but I'd come back to them time and time again like a masochist. And at number 27 we have Wacky Races. Now I wasn't a racing game fan, certainly not an arcade racing game fan, but this wasn't an arcade racing game, no it was a racing platform game which was something completely unique to me at the time. Mix in the fact that it's also Hanna Barbera and you're playing as Dastardly and Muttley. Top notch, get it played. At number 26 we have Rainbow Islands and you can't talk about arcade ports without talking about Rainbow Islands or of course Bubble Bobble. Didn't play that this year so it's not on the list but Rainbow Islands, what a classic game and what a great port. And not only that, this game ported to just about every system perfectly. You gotta play an arcade port, you play one of these. And at number 25 we have Tornado Low Level now, it was better known as TLL and it was unusual because you're a jet fighter but you have no fire button. What you had to do in this game was fly low over your target and that would destroy it. Now it did have a more successful, slightly better follow up in Cyclone but I didn't play that this year so play Tornado Low Level. Coming in at number 24 we have Harrier Attack, now looking at this you'll say, well it's certainly a Defender clone and there's nothing wrong with that because I do like a bit of Defender, but I think more importantly to me at the time, well, the Harrier, the Jump Jet Harrier was a British fighter jet and why not be a bit of a patriot when it comes to your country and more importantly their war machines. And at number 23 we have International Match Day which is yes a football game or a soccer game if you're from across the pond. Now I'm not a big football game fan or a big sports game fan for that matter but these games were the games that your buddies would play with you. So I put hours and hours into this game just because my mates would play with me and that's why it's so high on this list. And at number 22 we have Horace Goes Skiing, the second outing for Horace, the icon of the ZX Spectrum. And he goes skiing this time, but as you see at the beginning of the game there's a bit of a sort of frogger clone where you have to get across the road to rent your skis, but after that you're skiing all the way well until you injure yourself and don't have enough money for an ambulance or to rent skis. The 80s were weird. At 21 we have Hungry Horus, the first Horus game and, well look at it, it's a Pac-Man clone. It's not quite as basic as Pac-Man because there was several different levels to go through, but what made this game more important to me, what keeps it high on the list, it was the first video game that I ever owned. This was my first video game, so Hungry Horus, definitely high on my list. And at number 20 we have Ninja Master, now I've said before that I like to track and field type games, well this was a track and field type game except you were a ninja. Yes you had to deflect shurikens and chop wood with your bare hands and use your blowpipe. Do all the ninjury things that you weren't allowed to do in real life because the police would arrest you. So of course it was going to be high in my list. At number 19 we have Operation Wolf, a game that everybody knows but what they probably don't know is the port on the ZX Spectrum is absolutely phenomenal. It beats hands down any other 8-bit micro, it beats down probably any other 16-bit micro. Of course that's only my opinion but play the ZX Spectrum version of Operation Wolf if you want to find out for yourself. 
And at number 18 we have Underworld, another game from Ultimate Play the Game, as you all know who became Rare. And this game is absolutely brutal because it's a physics platform puzzler. The physics are the whole deal. You get bounced about this screen like a pinball in a pinball machine and there's nothing much you can do about it, except come back time and time again to try and progress. And at number 17 we have Jet Set Willy and Willy himself was another mascot of the 8-bit micros. His first game, well we might talk about that later on, but this game, he's a millionaire and he has to tidy up his mansion, but to do so he needs to do some pixel perfect jumping and we know what pixel perfect jumping meant in the 1980s. It meant tearing your hair out with your own hands while trying to play the game. And at number 16 we have Manic Miner which was Willy's first game, yes, this was the game that started Willy off and let me tell you it's just as brutal, actually it's more brutal than Jet Set Willy, by far. Actually I'll be frankly honest here, I think the only time you get remotely close to this level of frustration in a game, in the modern times that is, is in a Souls like. And if you don't believe me why don't you just try it for yourself. Coming in at number 15 we have Jack the Nipper, a fantastic game from Gremlin Graphics and to me this sort of puzzle adventure was the, the beginning of open world. Yes you have to travel screen by screen but you weren't stuck in just one screen or a linear stage, no you had to get out there and explore, that's why this was the beginning of open world, well for me anyway. Coming in at number 14 we have Rambo and this game was much more like open world. Yes, there was scrolling because it was the ZX Spectrum, but there was such an expansive map to explore and not only that, weapons to find, POWs to rescue and at the end you had to get them all to the helicopter. This game was top notch. Coming in at number 13 we have Leaderboard. Now just because I don't like sports games as a rule, doesn't mean I don't like all sports games, I do like a good golf game. And Leaderboard, that was the start of the great golf games. They're nothing like the, the PGA Tours that we have today, but you can see where they were going. We were going to have these great big courses and it was going to be silky smooth. But this is where it started. And at number 12 we have Raid Over Moscow, now this was a fantastic game, it was split into sections. You see back in the 1980s, games were either just one type of gameplay or they split them into various and this was one of the first games that I played where there was four different levels with four different elements of gameplay. Raid Over Moscow, take on the communists and great gameplay. At number 11 we have Trash Man, now it might seem like an odd title because you play a trash man, you go and collect rubbish from people's houses, you take it to the bin lorry and it carts away, but it's a simple high score game and such good fun and I don't know whether it was because you were doing a mundane job or not because there might be another one like that in the list, but these games were just so addictive, Trash Man was amazing. Coming in at number 10 we have 1942, now I've probably said this before but shmups are not my thing, but something about 1942 totally captured my imagination. I don't know what it was, it might have just been the barrel roll, it was certainly the upgrading because as an RPG guy I do like to upgrade and in this game your weapons got upgraded. 1942. And at number 9 is Minder, probably one of the most unique games on this list because you play the role of Arthur Daly, a TV character from back in the 80s on UK television, a wheeler and dealer who liked to buy and sell odd items and that's exactly what you do in this game. There's nothing much to it except for the strategy of buying the right things, selling the right things for the right price and not getting caught by the law. Coming in at number 8 we have Ghostbusters, now over here you would call it a Marmite game, that meant you either love it or you hate it. Now on the micros it was fine and I'm going to say this and I'm going to probably delete this later but it was much better than the Commodore 64. But playing this on the NES or the Master System, not quite as good as it was in the 8-bit micros and I absolutely adored this game. Coming in at number 7 we have the Sacred Armour of Antiriad, I'll call it Antiriad because it's much easier, but this is a game that you must play. This game was developed and released at the same time as Castlevania and Metroid, making it a lost Metroidvania and if you look at the gameplay you can see that itself. It was the beginning of a new type of genre and if you play one game off this list, find this and play it. Coming in at number 6 we have Saboteur where you play as a sort of ninja s character, a secret agent if you will, running about this enemy base with certain objectives to complete it, well complete it properly. You can just escape the base and that's almost enough, but if you don't do everything well you will get reprimanded. This game you can also play on modern consoles. 
coming in at number 5 we have Jetpack and it's the first game from Ultimate Play the Game that I played and as far as I know it was their first game but besides that this is the developers that became rare if you are a fan of video games whatsoever you need to play this one it's an important piece of history and not only that it's a really little solid shooter so get out there and play Jetpack you can play it on an Xbox One on the Rare Replay disc Coming in at number 4 we have 180, yes it's a darts game now if you're from across the pond you're probably not big in darts but we are over here, now it is a sports game but like I've said any sports games that were multiplayer back in the day they really captivated me but this was so much better than just a football game or a soccer game, it was fun so 180, get it played if you can. Coming in at number 3 we have Paperboy and yes it's another mundane job game, I don't know why we were so fascinated with them but we obviously were and Paperboy was probably the best of the bunch and not only that, on the ZX Spectrum it was absolutely fantastic, I haven't played a better port of the game in any system so if you get the chance on a ZX Spectrum play yourself some Paperboy today. And at number 2 we have Orbiter, now I'm going to make no bones about this, this is a Defender clone but it's a fantastic Defender clone and it was a way for me to play Defender at home when I was a kid, when I was 10 years old and that meant such a great deal to us because 10p in one of those arcade machines was a fortune and I loved this game so much so Orbiter on the ZX Spectrum. And at number 1, Rebel Star. Now anyone who doesn't know Rebel Star, as you can see from the screen, it's a turn based strategy game. It's a tactics game and I do love those games, I completely love those games. It's probably why I'm an RPG guy. And the beauty of this game, well it was two player, you and your best mate could sit down and pit your own tactics against each other. Something vital for back in the day gaming and that's why it's my number 1 game this year. So there you go my friends, that's my top 100 games from the ZX Spectrum, from games that I played because of the A to ZX of the Spectrum this year, not every game that I've obviously played in the ZX Spectrum because that, that list would just be way too long, which yes does hint that there may be another series of the A to ZX of the Spectrum but not quite so soon. I'm not shying away from all 8-bit micros and certainly not shying away from any particular generation at all. As you all know this is an all generation channel and I'm an all generation gamer so you will be getting plenty of 8-bit stuff in the future it just might not be so heavily biased towards the ZX Spectrum as much as I love that machine because you know what Mr Retro Bear yeah links in the description for his channel has sent me a little something that might get the C64 ball rolling now we all know, all joking aside, that the C64 and the ZX Spectrum, well, back on the playgrounds back in the 80s, that was a real big war. But it's about time I dipped my toe in that particular pool and seen what the C64 has to offer. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please throw me a thumbs up because one, it's good for the channel, and two, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And all that's left for me to do now is, well, to wish you all a Merry Christmas when it comes and of course a happy new year as well. Thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for taking this ZX Spectrum journey over this last year and until next time, as always, cheerio!